here in Cambodia's capital city and it's ride day. Everyone's pretty excited to hit the road. Here we go, let's have a fantastic trip guys. Leaving Phnom Penh, we catch a ferry across the Mekong River and head north. Today we're following the eastern bank of the Mekong for 130 kilometers on our way to Kampong Sham. There's riders from England, Scotland, Ireland, Norway and Australia on this tour, along with our Cambodian and Laotian support crews. Should be interesting. Our first rest stop is at a Buddhist pagoda. The monks bless the riders safe travel and good fortune for the journey ahead. Even the bike's got a blessing. With a few thousand kilometres ahead of us, we'll likely need all the help we can get. As we get deeper into the countryside, we blast through plantations and villages and are welcomed by the friendly locals. A quick lunch in the shade, then we're off through sugarcane and banana plantations. It will take us a few days travel before we reach any Cambodian sections of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. But this sandy stuff should keep us happy for a while. I'm feeling pretty good on this little Kawasaki today, but I just can't catch the lead rider Voight. He seems to be enjoying himself up in the deep sand. Through more little villages, we head back down to the river to catch a ferry. Water level is low during dry season, exposing huge sandy beaches that we can ride out onto. We enjoy a few beers while Voot and John race a few laps. Across the bridge we make our way through Kampong Sham to our hotel. Awesome! Good day mate. No, I love that. Looks like John's had a great day on the big yammy. Beautiful view from our hotel as we begin day two of our adventure. Today we're travelling 160 kilometres north along the western bank towards Krache. Pass through fishing villages and small towns, stopping in for a rest at a massive Hindu temple perched high up on the cliffs above the Mekong. Drank some fresh coconuts, they were pretty good. Ferry back over to the eastern bank and pass through the city of Krachi, 
running a further 15 kilometres north in a rush to beat the sunset. We head out to spot the critically endangered Irrawaddy dolphins. Conservation efforts have helped grow the local population to 92, but planned hydro dams will no doubt have massive impacts on those remaining. We spotted a few. Wow, I hope you got that. I actually saw a dolphin that time. Just down the road from our hotel, a huge free party is in full swing at a local park. There's even a massive light and sound show complete with dancing pop stars promoting energy drinks. A few more beers and we wander through the huge crowd checking out delicious local foods, including grasshoppers. There's even carnival rides for the big kids. Big day on the bikes today as we'll punch out a hefty 240 kilometres of trails from Crache to San Monero. <music> 60 kilometres of dirt tracks gets us to the first dodgy bridge. There's optional trails today for the more keen riders, so Toby leads our group onto a nasty little trail known as the King's Highway. One of my favourite trails in the Cambodian leg of our trip, these rocky trails were relentless. Never really got a chance to sit and rest before the next rocky step up or rut. After a couple of hours on the King's Highway, we meet up with the other group, but we still have a massive 120 kilometers of dirt before we get to our lodge. My poor little 250 is working hard as I try to keep up with John on the Yamaha. He's just ripping it. What's happened here? All well, I could do is slow it down as much as I could. If I'd have known the river was there, I'd just gone straight in it. <laughs> Are you right? Yeah. Huh? Were you excited? I was giving it the beat. Yeah, I thought so. Oh, there's a cornery thing yeah. here. <laughs> Both the rider and bike are okay, we're off again. We're off riding up into the Mondulkiri Hills. The foot tells me this is elephant country, though we didn't spot any. Another top day on the 
bikes and tonight we stay at the Nature Lodge. After a good night's sleep in the Mondalkiri Hills, we set off early heading north. Today we'll be smashing out 200 kilometers on our way to Ban Lung. The first 20 kilometers takes us through some hills and rocky creek sections. It was tricky in spots, but a lot of fun. While a recently built highway now connects neighbouring provinces, an older route still exists known as the Death Highway. We'll be riding that for the next few hours. Or trying to. <laughs> Not too far in, we cross paths with some illegal loggers moving timber out along the trail. Harvested for a lucrative black market, this prized hardwood is smuggled across the border into neighbouring Vietnam. These beastie machines are heavily reinforced with steel rebar and extra shockers. It's crazy they can balance these loads across the rocky single track. We came across a third wood thief who thought we were here to police illegal logging. Panicking, he took a machete to his cargo, dumping it to escape. Sorry mate. A few kilometres in we hear that Ewan has rolled his ankle in a low speed crash. Voot evacuates him safely out back to the support vehicle. No good. After three and a half days travelling across Cambodia, we're now officially riding original sections of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Utilised during the Vietnam War, this strategic network of roads, tracks and river crossings passed through Laos and Cambodia and provided logistical support from North to South Vietnam. At the start of the war, it took six months for soldiers to walk the entire Ho Chi Minh Trail. By the end, it only took six weeks. Kev decides to coast his bike. Over there. The trail was able to effectively supply troops fighting in the south, a military feat unparalleled given it was the site of the single most intense bombing campaign in history, with bombs dropping every seven minutes for a decade. It's so dry and hostile out here at the moment, you wouldn't want to get stuck by yourself without water. Late in the afternoon we reached the Seven Steps Waterfalls, beautiful spot for a swim. Kev even had a waterfall beer. Another 40 minutes to our destination, the Radanak Resort. <laughs> Awesome day on the bikes and tomorrow we rest. It's a rest day today so the bikes get a good clean and service. Our mechanic looks does a superb job of keeping them all running for the thousands of kilometres we'll travel. With a late start to the day we grabbed a tuk-tuk into Banlong to visit the bustling markets. In the afternoon we went for a swim at a huge volcanic lake just down the road from our resort. Dinner and drinks were at a funky local restaurant perched high up in the trees. They even put on some fireworks for us. I'm pretty excited to get back on the bike tomorrow. Against all better judgement and medical advice, Ewan has decided to ride with us today. But his ankle is still too swollen to fit in his Tech 10 boots. Tough stuff this. So Kev makes some handy adjustments to the inner booty with his Leatherman. A few revisions later. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. You know what I think I'm thinking? Just <laughs> <laughs> good, mate. Hey, but I'm good to go. It's awesome to have the Mad Scott back on board. We 
make a stop at a battle clearance site just out of town. An estimated 26 million submunitions were dropped in Cambodia with an unexploded failure rate of up to 30%. These NGOs work diligently to chart and clear the land, making it safe again for locals. Amazing work. Some sticky rice and banana while we wait for the ferry. Cambodians do love to celebrate, often setting up big party tents right in the middle of the street. John surrenders the big Yamaha to Toby after deciding it's too much of a handful. Fair enough. Despite a swollen ankle, Ewan is still keeping up ahead of the pack. Crazy. Today is our last full day of riding in Cambodia and by the time we hit the border tomorrow morning we'll have rounded off almost 900 kilometres in 6 days. It's been an amazing ride so far and we still have 1800 kilometres left throughout Laos. To another ferry, and I check in with John to see how he's travelling. Elated, elated. Does he travel well? Knackered. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy because I'm feeling better on this bike. That's Lao, just across the Mekong. We celebrate with some well-earned beers on the way to our campsite. Tomorrow we'll cross the border into Laos, but tonight we're camping on a sand island in the middle of the Mekong. Incredible. Yeah. 